Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at the Zippo lighter. More specifically, I'm going to take a look at the usefulness of a Zippo lighter as a tool for working with paracord. Now the reason that I began considering the Zippo lighter is that the traditional lighter is a bit too unreliable. One of these lighters can break down at any point. You don't know how much fuel you have, you can't refill it, and well, it isn't reliable because it is a cheap lighter. Now, when you invest in a Zippo lighter, you naturally pay more upfront. The lighter isn't all that cheap and well, you need supplies to maintain it. But well, I prefer to have one lighter which I can then maintain than to have a bunch of backup lighters and I never know which one is going to fail. So what are the main characteristics of a Zippo lighter? Now as mentioned, you are able to refill it, so lighter fluid is not going to be a huge problem. Secondly, the Zippo lighter is fairly sturdy, being made out of metal. Plastic lighters, such as these, can crack if they fall off of the table. Thirdly, the lighter is windproof. This means that you can use it outside quite efficiently. The lighter has all of its moving parts replaceable. The three main ones are the flint here, so the stone which you grind in order to create the sparks, then the wick and the lighter fluid. These three parts can be bought and used to maintain the lighter. The lighter also has a warranty, a lifetime warranty in fact. This is a plus I guess, but well, how often are you going to send a lighter in for repair? But it has that guarantee and you can send it to a Zippo clinic in order to get it serviced. Finally, it is a nice base for a knot project as I have demonstrated in a previous video. So with this said, let's take a look at how a Zippo lighter is able to function. So how does a Zippo lighter function? In many ways, just like a candle. First thing that we need is a source of fuel. In a Zippo lighter, the fuel is going to be lighter fluid. In a candle, the fuel is wax. Then, a piece of wick is dipped inside the fuel in order to absorb it and bring it to the surface. In a candle, again, wick is used for the same purpose. And finally, we need to ignite both the lighter and the candle. Now the lighter is easier to ignite since the lighter fluid, so the fuel is flammable. As such, all you need is a spark. A spark is gained by grinding a bit of flint with this wheel which produces a spark. In a candle, the fuel is not flammable in its solid state, so you're going to need something flammable, so fire in order to light up a candle.
Let's take a look at the supplies needed in order to maintain a Zippo lighter. The main supply, so the one that you're going to need the most of, is lighter fluid. Now lighter fluid is where you can save a lot of money by doing one of three things. Either you buy your lighter fluid in larger containers, which is a lot more economical. You can search for bulk deals where you get, for example, 10 of these containers for a reduced price, or you can use non-original lighter fluid. It is up to you. The next supply is wick. Wick is sold in a package of one 4 inch long wick. This is going to last you quite a long time. And the last supply is flint, which will also last you quite a long time. It is sold in a package of six. When you get your lighter, it comes neatly packaged in a box. Inside is the lighter and the instructions for use. Mainly, how to add in lighter fluid, how to change the wick and how to add in flint. Now one thing that you do need to be aware of is that the lighter comes empty. So it doesn't have any lighter fluid. Now you may be used to these style of lighters, which do have lighter fluid since they're not refillable. But due to shipping restrictions and things like that, I think that they send them out empty. This is why when you get your Zippo lighter, it is also important to get lighter fluid. So this is the basic kit that you should get at the start. So the Zippo lighter, which is going to come empty, and lighter fluid so that you can begin using it immediately. Filling the lighter is quite easy. Naturally, use safety precautions, such as don't fill near an open flame, and don't get the lighter fluid in your eyes or on your skin. To start off, open your lighter and to remove the insert out of the lighter. Basically, you just wiggle it around left and right until you get it out. Once you get the insert out, get your lighter fluid, open it, like this. Then all you do is lift up this bottom part and fill in the fluid. Now the main important part is not to overfill your lighter, otherwise closing it up is going to be a problem. After you have filled enough, push this bottom part back into place, open up the lighter, so the container, and place your insert back in. Now, as a safety precaution, leave your lighter a little bit, for any drops of lighter fluid to evaporate. Also wash your hands. After that, the lighter is ready to be used.
The second thing that you're going to need to maintain is the flint. Flint is scraped off using this wheel and once in a while it runs out. To replace it, remove the insert again and this time unscrew this screw. Inside is a little spring and this spring pushes in the flint. Now you can get a new flint out of your dispenser. Simply turn it out. Then you place it inside this tube. Place your spring back in. And screw in the screw. You're going to need to screw it in all the way in. If you leave it loose, then your Zippo lighter is not going to be able to close. After replacing your flint, place your insert back in, like this, and you have a brand new flint. The last part that's going to require fairly regular maintenance is the wick. You're going to need to trim it a couple of times a year. To do this, what you do is you pull it out a little bit using a pair of pliers. Then you trim it. Usually we trim the black part of the wick, which doesn't burn quite well. Now at some point, you're going to run out of wick. At that point, you simply buy a new pack, a pack of one that is, and you reinsert it. By clearing the entire contents of this insert, so the little cotton balls that are inside, pull out your existing wick and insert the new one from the top down, then snake it like this, so in a snake-like form, to jam the entire thing in, and then you have a new wick to work with. Now let's discuss the Zippo lighter in the context of working with paracord. One thing that you will immediately notice is that it stands on the table quite firmly. Once you light it up, it basically acts as a candle. You don't need to interact with it in order to keep the flame going. A traditional lighter is not going to stand on the table as firmly, plus it requires you to hold the button in order to keep the flame going. As such, you can use the Zippo lighter hands-free and use your hands to work with paracord. Now, let's test how well it singes paracord when you have an end of paracord which you cut off. So I cut a bit of my paracord and then I'm going to melt it. So for finishing the ends of paracord, it works just fine. Now what about when I have a bracelet and I want to melt an end very close to the bracelet? I am a bit worried that the strong flame from the Zippo lighter is going to melt the surrounding paracord as well. Let's test it out.
As far as I can see, it also works quite well. So guys, this is it for my look at the Zippo lighter. I think it did a good job melting paracord, plus it has a number of other advantages. You can refill it, it stands alone without any interaction from me, and a number of others as well. In any case, I would recommend it as a primary lighter, but I would also pair it with something like a torch lighter. Something with a more focused flame for really detailed tasks. But for general work, this one is going to do. Thank you very much for joining me in this video, and I hope to see you next time.